Hi guys, the title of the title you see on the screen today, don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll get started. In fact, there is nothing more terrible in the world than false hope. And this is exactly what happened to the heroine of this story. The girl lay on the bed in complete despair. She was all in tears and next to her stood a maid on her knees and turning to her highness asked her not to cry but to calm down. But the girl hysterically replied that she had been hoping for a long time. And in the end, he just went and married Lily. She asked the maid if they weren't on bad terms because she thought there was absolutely no future for them. That day, that beautiful lady's five-year unrequited love ended in complete disappointment. And all because he married another girl. And the heroine still clearly remembered their first meeting and when she fell in love with him at first sight. One day she was at a banquet with her friend, and her friend asked the princess if she had heard that the Marquis's successor would be arriving that day. The girl immediately said that of course she had not heard about it, but now that her friend mentioned it, she turned her head to the side and immediately noticed how some man entered the hall. This guy was simply gorgeous. He had jet black hair, beautiful yellow eyes, and he was wearing a very beautiful military uniform. And as soon as the girl saw him, she immediately realized that she wanted to build a future with him because this guy was the real ideal for her. After that banquet, she went to her father and without even saying hello, said that she wanted to marry the Marquis's successor. She came closer to her father and said that she was head over heels in love with him and asked if he would mind if she really did it. When the man heard all this, he was very surprised and turning to his daughter, whose name was Estella, asked her not to tell him that she meant Isaac. Estella, beaming with joy, said that, of course, she was talking about him and she couldn't talk about anyone else. The father then, sighing heavily, said that, unfortunately, this was impossible. When she heard this, she was simply furious and, slamming her hand on the table, asked why it was impossible. The man had never seen her so angry, so he tried to calm her down and said in a quiet voice, that Isaac was already engaged to the eldest daughter of Archduke Bertrand. And as soon as Estella heard this, she was so disappointed and surprised that she just stood there in a stupor for a while. Because the girl was so eccentric and dramatic, she fell into a chair and putting her hand on her head quietly asked, is he really engaged already? The man, when he saw that his daughter had become ill, ran up to her and immediately turned to the security guard, asking him to bring a doctor because he saw that she was very ill. Then, in fact, something very unexpected and mysterious came to light at that moment, when she seemed to turn into a withering flower. Estella was just lying in her bed for the mine layer and didn't want to do anything, and one morning her father came to her and said that he had very good news for her. The girl, having lost all hope, asked without much interest what this news was, and the man, hoping that it would cheer her up, said that Isaac's wedding was postponed. At first, Estella couldn't believe that this was really true. Her eyes lit up a little with rays of hope, and then she asked why this wedding was being postponed. In fact, some time before he came to his daughter, he called a doctor to see him, and he said that, as he himself already knew, Estella had been feeling incredibly ill all this time. So he told the doctor that he had one request. The guy immediately became interested in what kind of request it was, but said that he would try to fulfill absolutely anything. Then the girl's father came closer to him and said that his daughter loved Isaac very much. And so, not intending to ask for something as shameful as the dissolution of his engagement, he asked if it was possible to at least postpone the wedding for a few years. This doctor was Isaac's father and he said with a smile on his face that the man should not worry, because in any case Isaac would not be able to marry until he came of age. Of course, the man was not going to tell his daughter this information, so, scratching his head, he said that no one knew this. Perhaps there were some problems in the relationship with the bride. Estella practically jumped to her feet and asked her father if he really thought they could part so soon. Seeing a glimmer of hope in his daughter's eyes, he said it was possible. But in reality, the father only played a cruel joke on his daughter because from that moment on, she began to harbor completely false hopes on this account. She waited for Isaac with impatience, 
even when he went to the battlefield. The girl was worried about his well-being and hoped that when he returned, he would love her and they would be together. But as soon as he returned from his mission, he immediately married the girl he had intended to. It was a huge blow to Estella, and she couldn't believe that all her hopes, dreams, and goals had just collapsed in one moment. People around were happy for Isaac and said that they were a wonderful couple, of course. Everyone congratulated them on their wedding because they really looked very beautiful together. But the girl, of course, was not happy about this, so she quickly ran away from the wedding in tears. She hid in the forest, away from all eyes, so that she could be alone with her grief. The girl cried for hours on end, and soon she realized that the wedding would soon be over. She didn't even know what to tell him. Estella imagined herself walking up to him and congratulating him on his successful choice of wife with a smile on her face. But she couldn't even understand how she could bring herself to do something like that. She knew that as soon as she came up to him and saw his happy face, she would immediately burst into tears. She sat by the lake for a while longer and thought about her miserable life. But then she realized that she couldn't stay there forever. She had to leave already. But as soon as the girl stood up, she heard a strange voice coming from behind her. It told Estella to turn back time. The girl was very surprised when she heard something like that. She immediately stopped in her tracks and began to look around the area, not understanding who said that. When Estella didn't see a single soul around her, she thought she had become so agitated that she had even begun to hear voices. But then suddenly the girl saw something strange in the lake before leaving. She walked closer to the edge and noticed some strange circles that began to appear there. She immediately became curious about what this was from. Estella came closer and closer to the water and then suddenly saw the silhouette of a man who was right in the middle of this lake. The girl was so scared that she even accidentally twisted her leg. She couldn't stay on the ground, so she immediately flew straight into this lake. At that moment, Estella regretted even more that she had worn such high heels and also reproached herself for her carelessness. Her father always told her to be attentive and always watch her step, but as soon as Estella got carried away with something, she could no longer pay attention to such simple things. So, as soon as the girl dived into the lake, she realized that she couldn't get out of there. The water just swallowed her deeper and deeper. Estella couldn't come up to the surface. She was just drowning and suffocating. The girl couldn't believe that she would drown right at the wedding of her beloved man. She understood that this death was simply terrible, and she hated the thought that her body would be found in the lake, and they would think that she herself went there because of unrequited love. But immediately after the girl finally lost consciousness, she opened her eyes and sat up on the bed. Estella looked at her hands and realized that she was somehow alive. For a while, everything was spinning before her eyes, because she could not understand what was happening or where she was. After that, she felt someone take her hand. When she turned her head, she saw the nanny in front of her and was very surprised. The woman was in tears, and Estella could not understand why the girl had aged so much. She had the feeling that she had become at least ten years older. The nanny hugged her hand and asked if the girl had any idea how scared she was. The woman also said that she could not believe that she had just jumped into the pond so recklessly without thinking about her loved ones. When Estella heard these senseless accusations against her, she was very angry and said that it actually didn't happen on purpose. But she was worried about a problem. Looking around, she saw a simply luxurious room and turning to the nanny, asked where it was and also asked if they really had such a luxurious room in the palace. When the woman heard all this, she was excited. She looked at the girl and asking for forgiveness, asked what she meant. When the nanny was about to say something else, the doors to the room opened and two small but incredibly beautiful children appeared there. These children ran to Estella's bed and immediately began calling her mom. She was a beautiful girl and a little boy who even burst into tears. When the boy began to ask to be picked up and the girl jumped onto the bed, the girl did not understand anything at all. The child asked if everything was okay with their mother and also asked if she was feeling well in general, and the boy continued to cry and asked to be held in her arms. Estella was very surprised and asked what these children were talking about 
and why they called her mom. The children then both began to cry and did not understand why she was reacting to them like that. And they also could not believe that she simply did not recognize them. But when Estella looked at them more closely, she realized that these children looked very familiar, but she still could not guess where she had seen them. Then suddenly, a man entered the room, and folding his arms across his chest, he asked in a cold voice whether she really didn't want to see her own children now. Estella, when she heard the new voice, immediately turned to the door and saw a very familiar face there. Of course, that person was Isaac. He was standing at the entrance and wasn't even going to approach her. He was looking at the girl as if she was incredibly disgusting to him. She was silent for a while, and then, raising her voice, asked him what he was doing at her house. But then she realized that she wanted to know something else, and asked where she was anyway. When the elderly woman who was standing nearby heard all this, she was very upset and did not understand what was happening to the lady. Isaac himself was surprised by the girl's behavior, but he came closer and didn't understand why she was asking such questions. The children immediately ran to him. He picked up the girl in his arms and, throwing her up, immediately greeted her and hugged her. After this, Isaac continued to look at Estella in surprise and asked why she was acting as if she had never seen them before. Estella herself was beginning to get incredibly worried. She raised her voice and asked where she was, and also why he was treating her as if she were his wife. After that, she asked how Lily was, because he loved her and married her. Estella clearly remembered being at their wedding, so now she didn't understand why it seemed like he married her, and what kind of children they were, why they called Isaac dad and her mom. The man put his daughter back on the ground, was very surprised. For some time, he just silently looked at the girl. After this, the guy turned to the nanny who was standing nearby and said that he would go get some medicine because Stella was acting strangely, and he thought it was time for her to take it. The woman did not object and said that it was quite possible that such a reaction was due to the fact that she hit her head during the fall. Estella, hearing at least one familiar situation, immediately screamed and said that she had fallen into the lake at his wedding. After that, she asked in a trembling voice if this was some kind of stupid joke and they were just trying to play her like a little child. The girl immediately asked where Lily was and with a smile on her face said that she was probably involved in this too. After that, she said that if this was all really a joke, then it was not funny at all and their plan had failed. Isaac began to worry a lot about the girl. He turned to the nanny and asked her to bring a doctor as soon as possible. The woman herself was very scared, so she quickly ran out of the room to look for a doctor. Then the daughter, whom the man took back into his arms, asked if her mother had really hit her head that hard. He said that this was indeed the case, and that the blow must have been quite strong since she had some problems. Estella sighed heavily, not understanding what was happening and really wished they would give her a minute to think. Then the girl looked at the children that Isaac held in his arms and realized that their faces and blonde hair really indicated that they were their children. But she actually doesn't remember a single night with Isaac, so she didn't understand how this was even possible. Then suddenly, the girl saw that there was a mirror next to her. She immediately decided to check if anything had changed in her own appearance. And when Estella saw her reflection there, she noticed that her childish cheeks had completely disappeared, and the corners of her eyes rose much higher. She looked at her reflection in the mirror and could not understand whether it was really her. Then Estella moved the mirror away from herself, and looking at Isaac, asked what year it was. He immediately named the year, and when the girl heard this, she panicked again and said that this could not be. She was furious because she was absolutely sure that she fell into the lake on the 17th of May, seven years before the year that Isaac named. The girl remembered this clearly because she always dreamed of becoming a May bride. It was at that time that the guy returned and she hoped that he would confess his love to her. It was then that Estella fully realized that she had been transported seven years forward in time. But the girl did not understand how this was even possible. Isaac and the children also looked at her in surprise, not understanding why she was acting like that. After all, the girl had an incredibly frightened expression on her face, as if she had seen a ghost. 
Some time passed since then, and finally a doctor came to the girl, examined her carefully, and was finally able to make his verdict. The man, adjusting his glasses, said that she had amnesia. He, turning to Isaac, replied that his wife could remember everything up to the age of 19. However, unfortunately, she does not remember everything that happened after this moment. When Estella heard this, she was genuinely surprised. The girl didn't know how seven years of her life could just disappear from her memory. The doctor also said that it looks very much like partial amnesia. Most likely, it is the state of shock that occurred when she fell into the pond, and that is what caused all this to happen. He added that despite the absence of other injuries, she may experience sudden headaches and memories will return only in small fragments and gradually. The doctor said that she was probably completely confused at the moment, so he decided to prescribe her some medicine that should calm her down and help her a little. Isaac was very surprised and immediately turned to the doctor, asking what would happen if her memories did not return to her. The doctor was silent for a while and then said that, in that case, it would not prevent her from living. It might take a long time, but it would be better for a man not to worry too much about it. After that, he looked at Estella and asked her not to force herself to remember anything either. He really wanted her to take this situation easier, and then everything would be fine. The girl was really incredibly confused, but she agreed with the doctor and said that she would try to do everything. Then the man said that if that was all, then he would go. Isaac agreed and replied that he would be called if something happened. And yet it was incredibly difficult for him to believe that this was actually true. Estella sat silently for a while and then asked if these were really their children. The man confirmed this, and she asked in the same surprised voice if they were really twins. Isaac said that it was, and after that she started asking him many more questions. He explained that they were in his mansion, and added that obviously if she was there and they had children, then they were married. In fact, Estella noticed that over the past time, Isaac had become even more handsome, taller and more muscular. It was incredibly difficult for the girl to believe that she had grown up, married this incredibly handsome man, and even gave birth to two children from him, who were also beautiful. Then the girl felt incredibly proud of herself, and hearing all this information, she could not hold back her emotions and said that it was amazing. Isaac, hearing such an expression of emotions, immediately asked what she meant. But Estella, smiling, even became a little embarrassed and said that it was all just very unexpected. The fact that she ended up marrying him was even like winning the lottery for her. The man began to get incredibly angry with her. His hand even shook a little. And in a cold voice, he asked if she had really lost her memory. He started yelling at the girl, asking if she was pretending just to make fun of him in this way. When Stella heard this, she was very surprised and asked what he was talking about. She, of course, would never do such a thing. But the man said that she was actually very good at this kind of manipulation and asked if she really didn't remember how cold she had been towards him the previous evening. It was hard for him to believe that she didn't remember anything and was talking about winning the lottery, even though she simply hated him with all her soul. Estella, when she heard all these words, wondered whether Isaac had really always been so hot-tempered. But some notes in his gaze made the girl understand that he was very offended at her for some unknown reason. So she tried to smooth things over and said that he himself had heard the doctor's words. So she did not understand why he still thought that this was just some kind of mockery. Estella said she felt angry with herself. So she explained that they needed to try to understand each other in a calm atmosphere in order to decide what to do next. The girl asked in surprise, if she had really been so cold towards him that he had harbored such a grudge against her. But without waiting for an answer, she said that even now her heart beats wildly just at the sight of him. Of course, the girl couldn't be upset because she just blinked and found out that she found herself in the future, married to her first love, without whom she simply could not live. Isaac was silent for a while, after which he sighed heavily and explained to her that they were, in fact, on the verge of divorce. When Stella heard this, she froze in surprise. She couldn't believe that this could be true, 
because she always imagined their future to be incredibly happy and long. With a trembling voice, she asked what he meant and why they needed a divorce at all. The girl even suggested that it was just another joke. Estella started screaming, and the boy who was standing and watching all this from the side could not bear his emotions and burst into tears. It was incredibly difficult for him to go through all this. The children hugged their dad and started crying together because they were very vulnerable. And it was hard for them when their mother didn't remember them and their parents started arguing again. When Estella saw this, she was very surprised. She did not expect such a reaction from them. The man, having calmed down a little, hugged his son and suggested that the girl calm down and end it there. He said that, of course, he had no idea why she had fallen into the pond, but when the divorce was finally finalized, he and the children would simply disappear. Estella didn't understand what was happening, but Isaac turned around and started to walk away, saying that she didn't have to be so angry anymore. But before he finally left with the children in his arms, who continued to cry, he said that the depth of the pond was incredibly shallow, such that the water could not even reach her hips. He turned to her and, smiling maliciously, said that there was nothing at the bottom except sand, so how she got hurt remained a mystery to him. Estella didn't understand what had happened, and that was why she couldn't say anything in her defense. So Isaac simply left, slamming the doors behind him. It was very hard for her not to remember anything, because it only created more problems. No matter how hard Estella tried, she still couldn't remember anything at all after Isaac and Lily's wedding. But she was also very confused by the fact that up until this point, her memories of the past had been incredibly clear. She remembered everything down to the smallest detail. Estella thought for quite a long time about how it could have happened and came to the conclusion that the most logical explanation was that she, being 19 years old, had moved into the future. But then she suddenly realized that the strange fact was that she didn't know what happened to Lily in the end. She had so many more questions to ask Isaac, but it was obvious that he wouldn't even want to talk to her. She didn't understand how she could ask anything at all from a person who had an incredibly harsh and disrespectful look towards her. Of course, Estella realized that although she had dreamed of being with this man, when she found herself married, her impressions became completely different. She was even scared to think that she was on the verge of divorce from this man, although she had been simply crazy about him all the time. The girl thought that for the sake of decency, it would be possible to at least preserve the memories of how the twins came to be. Some time passed since then, and the nanny came to her again and also brought her hot tea. Estella immediately began asking questions in order to find out as much as possible. The girl asked how she had lost consciousness in the first place. The maid was a little surprised to hear this question, but told the girl that she fell into the lake, and that was why she lost consciousness. She also said that one servant saw this and therefore ran after her, but in the end she was already unconscious. When Estella heard this, she was even a little upset and considered the whole situation strange because the same event happened, but the details were different. Then she thought about it and realized that that time, before she fell into the water, she clearly heard a strange voice, but there was no one nearby. When she thought about all this, she suddenly stood up on her feet with an absolutely confident expression on her face. When the nanny saw this, she immediately panicked. She immediately ran up to the girl and told her highness that such sudden movements could only harm her because the doctor said that she needed rest. But Estella, turning to her, smiled and said that she needed to look at that pond in order to make sure of something. The girl immediately ran after her because her highness began to run away very quickly in order to do this, and she said that in that case, she should at least throw a scarf over her shoulders. Some time passed from that moment. Estella quickly ran to that lake and, without thinking twice, immediately went in there quite deep, but the water was only knee-deep for her. When the nanny saw this, she immediately stuttered and told her not to do that and asked her to go back to the shore. But the girl didn't listen to her. She looked down and realized that Isaac was indeed right. The water didn't even reach her hips, despite the fact that she had already reached the middle. Soon after, she finally went ashore. There, 
the nanny immediately handed her a handkerchief and asked what she wanted to check so urgently in such icy water at night. Estella immediately threw the shawl over her shoulders and said in a quiet voice that she herself did not know, but she realized that given everything she had seen, only one conclusion suggested itself in her head. However, she knew that no one would believe her if she told anyone about it out loud. Everyone would think she was crazy, and perhaps everything would even get worse. She immediately turned to the maid and asked where Isaac was at that moment, because she needed to talk to him immediately. The nanny looked at the lady in surprise and said that, most likely, he was in the greenhouse with the children, as always at this time. Estella, hearing this, immediately said that if they were in the greenhouse, they must go there at once. But as soon as the nurse began to leave, she asked her to stay a little longer. Her assistant stopped, and the girl asked her if she knew that she had lost all her memories after the age of 19. The nanny said that this was all true, and also asked that the lady not worry too much, because these memories would definitely return to her. Before she even had time to look back, she would already remember everything again. The girl immediately straightened her headscarf, and turning away from the maid, said that it was not about that. She had something much more important. She immediately asked, And what is this? And Stella, in a quiet and worried voice, asked the girl if these twins were really her children, because she had very big doubts about this. She also asked her in a surprised voice, Is she really married to Isaac? The maid immediately said that of course she was, and there was no doubt about it. Hearing this, Estella immediately pounced on her and asked why, in that case, they were on the verge of divorce. What had happened that made her make such a decision? The nanny replied to her highness that she had no right to interfere in their personal relationship as spouses. But she also said that she thinks that if a girl wants to know the answer, it is best to ask the man directly. Then he will explain everything to her in detail. Stella started crying and said that of course she couldn't ask Isaac, because he even looked at her with disgust, as if he wanted to kill her with his own hands. The girl said that, of course, she was not stupid and could not ask something from a person with such a look, so she begged the maid to tell her at least something. The nanny continued to insist on her own and told Her Highness that she believed that she should discuss such things with the master directly. Estella looked at her in surprise. The girl was silent for a while, after which, in a trembling voice, she asked the maid if she really couldn't help her at all. Sighing heavily, the nanny said that, unfortunately, she could not interfere in these matters, so she would not help her with this. In the meantime, they had already managed to come to the greenhouse. The girl knocked on the door and, turning to his highness, said that his mistress had come to him and wanted to talk. The man allowed her to enter. The nanny stepped aside and, bowing, told the lady to try to behave casually and simply talk to the man without raising her tone or anything like that. Estella looked at her in surprise and asked if she really thought that was possible. But the girl didn't answer, and by that time the doors had already opened. When Isaac, who was with the children, looked to the side and saw his wife, he was very surprised. He immediately turned to her and said that she was confused, so he asked why she did not just rest. The girl came closer to him and, looking sadly at her first love, said that this was the whole reason. Isaac, wiping the dirt off his daughter's face, said that worrying definitely wouldn't help her get her memories back so she could relax. However, the girl continued to insist on her own and said that if anything happened, she needed to know what she had forgotten, at least the most important things. The man looked at her in surprise for a while and said nothing. Then Estella said that she had just checked the pond she had fallen into to make sure of something. She immediately asked if he had always been like this. Even years ago, he had not been this deep. The man said that it was. Stella, lost in thought, wondered if the pond had never been deeper. But she decided to forget about it and said that she wanted to ask him something else. She turned to Isaac and asked, wasn't he married to her cousin Lily Bertrand since the last thing she remembered was their wedding day? He immediately turned his head and looked at the girl in surprise. His face immediately darkened, and he asked in a cold and distant voice, Is this really her last memory? Estella said in a confident voice that it was indeed so. After that moment, she did not remember anything. Then the man sighed heavily 
but did not answer. He only looked away from her. The girl, seeing such a strange reaction, did not understand why he reacted that way, and even decided that she had somehow hurt him with memories of Lily. In order to correct the situation, she turned to Isaac in a quiet voice and said that she, of course, did not think that he would believe her so easily. But he was her husband and the closest person, so she decided to start by resolving their misunderstandings. Isaac, looking at her in surprise and not understanding what she meant at all, already wanted to end this conversation, but Estella asked him to listen to her first. After that, she said in a confident voice and quite loudly that she believed that she had somehow ended up in the future. The guy, hearing this, looked at her in great surprise and already thought that she had gone completely crazy. Estella, seeing his surprised face, said that he had heard everything correctly. She had moved forward seven years. Isaac didn't react to all this at all. Then she, sighing heavily, said that she knew that it all sounded crazy. But she didn't think that amnesia was actually to blame for everything. Estella asked, Is it possible to lose memory from falling into a very shallow pond, at the bottom of which there are not even stones? She raised her voice and asked him if he could believe that she had fallen into the same pond at his and Lily's wedding, and that she was absolutely certain that she had heard a voice before that telling her to turn back time. And the girl said that this mysterious voice even called her by name. She herself was very worried that the guy could accuse her of lying, even when she was so sincere. Estella wondered if he had any trust in her, but Isaac, hearing her, turned away and said that she was overexerting herself. After that, he asked, Is there really any servant nearby? Stella was very upset. She began to scream, asking even more why he did not believe her, because she wanted a little trust in relation to his wife, because she was telling the absolute truth. At that moment, her daughter came up to her and, pulling her by the scarf, told her mother that she had made tea for her, and immediately handed her a small mug of the drink. Before giving it to the woman, the girl also showed her how to do it. Stella was very surprised and even a little excited. She asked her daughter if she really wanted her to drink this liquid. The girl began to pull the cup of tea towards her again and said that, of course, she would like her mother to try this drink. For a while, Estella simply looked into the cup, which contained completely accidentally poured dirt from the ground, diluted with water. When she asked her daughter again if she should drink it, the girl said that she had to, and then the woman pretended to drink it. Stella couldn't believe that she had come to such a life that she had to drink dirt. After some time, she looked at her daughter and asked if she really wanted her to continue. Her daughter, smiling happily, said that of course she wanted her mother to finish it all. But Estella, doing so with a smile on her face, said that she thought it was missing a little sugar and asked if the children could go and get some. The sister took her brother by the hand, and soon they ran out of the greenhouse in search of sugar. When Estella was left alone with the man, she immediately turned to him and asked where she had stopped. But the man interrupted her. He extended his hand forward and asked her to at least sit down first. Estella looked down and saw that there was not even a blanket. She wondered if he really wanted her to sit right on the ground. Isaac was very surprised by her fastidiousness and said that, of course, he would not plant her on damp soil. He could give her a lining. But the girl, indignant, replied that even in her palace, she had never sat on the floor. The guy understood that she would resist to the end, so he began to take off his jacket. After that, he laid it on the ground next to him and asked if this was a better way for her. Stella thanked him and immediately sat down next to him, then Isak spoke and repeated her words about her having ended up in the future. And he cautiously asked, Does this really mean that her body is 26 years old, but in reality in her head, she thinks that she is only 19? Estella said that all this was really so. And he also asked, Does it really mean that she doesn't have amnesia after all? The girl, of course, was a little worried about his reaction, but she said that everything was exactly like that. She heard someone call her by name at his and Lily's wedding, and after that, this voice told her to turn back time. Estella began to remember all these events, and in a quiet, muffled voice said that she had a very strange feeling, so she tried to look closely at the water. 
But soon the girl began to feel very dizzy, and she ended up simply falling into the water. She went deeper and deeper into the water, even though in reality this lake is not deep. The girl also said that when she finally opened her eyes, she was shocked because she found herself in a completely different place and much further in time than she had been. Isaac listened attentively to her story, but did not answer. He only looked at the girl without taking his eyes off her. Estella felt very uncomfortable about this and asked in surprise, why was he looking at her like that? Did he really want to say that his wife had simply gone crazy? I, the guy replied that this was not true at all. Now he finally understood that she was behaving differently and treating him differently than before, as if she really were 19 years old, and this explained a lot to him. After clearing his throat, the man also said that it could, of course, be an incredibly good and professional pretense on her part, or she really had moved forward a certain amount of time. Estella immediately said that she, of course, was not lying. There was no need for her to pretend like that. And then in a surprised voice, she asked, did he really not trust her at all? He said that this is indeed the case. One person who is to blame for the fact that he turned out to be exactly like this. Estella, of course, did not respond to this because she understood that this person was indeed she, but only from the future. Some time passed from that moment and the children finally returned to them. However, they still did not bring sugar, but brought some kind of pile of dirt with leaves on a plate. They were positively beaming with joy. Turning to their mom and dad, they asked them to try this wonderful dish, a delicacy called macaron. Estella was very surprised by this. She had never played with children before, so she did not know how to react to all this, and she really wanted someone to help her and give her advice. But as soon as she saw their beautiful, sweet, pitiful little faces which begged her to try, the girl had no choice. Without any embarrassment, she picked up the dessert and pretended to eat it. Then she turned to the children and said that it was so delicious that she would like to try some more. The children immediately went to fulfill her request and prepared an extra serving for their beloved mother. And Stella, watching this, said that they were somehow very happy and asked, was it really because of her? Isaac showed no such surprise or admiration at all. He said in a cold voice that they were much more active than usual because she had come. When she heard this, she was immediately surprised and asked him what he meant. And the man, looking at the children, who were very happy, said that she usually did not come to the greenhouse, so that was why they were very happy. The girl could not believe that she had not really come to this greenhouse to play with her own children, all this time, she did not understand how she could have become like this. Isaac sighed heavily and said that she was indeed a rare guest at games with children. But in the meantime, a boy and a girl had already run up to them and given Daddy some tea to try, saying that they had made more. The man immediately began to admire their cooking, as well as the fact that they did it quite quickly. Of course, he praised his children for all this. But at that moment, the boy who was standing next to his sister, reached out to his mother and thereby showed that he wanted to go to her. Stella just looked for a while. She understood that they were her children and everything was as it should be, but she was still unable to take him in her arms because she felt very uncomfortable. Isaac quickly noticed this, so he turned to the boy and asked him not to put pressure on his mother because she was still feeling a little bad. The boy immediately went to him and said that he would not do that again. Of course, he was upset because his mother did not pick him up and he wanted her attention so much. Estella felt a little ashamed of her behavior and said that she really couldn't remember anything. It was very difficult for her to realize that she was seeing these children for the first time and didn't know who they were. When all three of them heard this, they just looked at the woman in surprise, not understanding why she was saying that and the girl actually felt incredibly alien and even superfluous because of all those glances that were directed at her. She asked what their full names were, and Isaac said that the girl's name was Lucia and the boy's was Rustel. After he said their last name, the girl was very surprised and asked, do they really have her last name? But when she saw his stern look, she immediately said that his last name would also sound very good. Stella felt uncomfortable again, 
Thinking that she had said something wrong, the girl realized that she was acting as if she was walking on thin ice, and she needed to think carefully about every word she said. After this, in a trembling voice, she asked which of them had chosen these wonderful names. Isaac said that it was he. She had taken no part in it. The girl stroked the boy's head and then began to squeeze his cheeks, but he didn't like it at all, and so he burst into tears. Estella immediately apologized and said that he was so sweet that she just couldn't resist doing it. She was silent for a while, and then lowering her head, she told Isaac that she was not lying at all, but really thought so. Amnesia had nothing to do with it. She had ended up in the future. Estella also said that the way he acts towards her and the way the children communicate proves that the future her did something completely wrong. She said that she believed that her presence in this place was necessary in order to correct her mistakes. The man hearing this was very surprised. He was about to stop her, but the girl said that at the age of 19, she really loved him very much. So she asked if he could not divorce her. Isaac was very surprised. He was silent for a while. And then, sighing heavily, he said that it had been her idea. When she heard this, she was simply stunned and asked how this was possible. And the man only repeated that she had, in fact, initiated their divorce. Stella couldn't contain her emotions. She started screaming, asking why this had happened. The man felt sad about the whole conversation, and he said that he himself really had no idea why she had made such a decision. He explained that she had said that she would leave the care of the children to him. So he concluded that the family was a very heavy burden for her, and she simply wanted to get rid of them. After that, he asked, does she really think that she moved to the future just to correct mistakes? And also said that he thinks that this is not so. Isaac stood up and said in a stern voice that the future she wanted this divorce and words of love will not correct the fact that she caused him incredible pain, as well as the children. He also came clean and said that he was incredibly tired of all this. Therefore, he saw no point in continuing these arguments over and over again. Meanwhile, he returned to the estate with the children, and Lucia saw that her father had tears running down his cheeks. She asked, was he really crying? The man held her hand tightly, but did not respond to this. He walked very quickly, and Rustle, who also burst into tears, asked him to slow down a little, because he simply could not keep up with him. But the father did not listen to them. He walked faster and faster. Then the boy could not hold on. He accidentally hooked his own leg and simply fell. Isaac stopped immediately. He embraced his son and asked for forgiveness, saying that he had walked too fast, and it was his fault. After that, he asked the boy to let him examine him carefully to see if he was hurt. But the boy only hugged his dad and cried. Lucy continued to insist on her own and asked why he was crying. Isaac, in a slightly irritated voice, asked why she had decided that at all. The girl raised her eyebrows and said that he was squinting like that. And she said that this usually happens when people cry. The man decided to change the subject and said that if he really had such a scary face, then he asked them for forgiveness. He promised the children that this would not happen again. Meanwhile, they looked at the portrait of Estella, which hung nearby, and he sighed heavily, thinking that yesterday she had hardly noticed him. Well, somehow they got married and had children. However, this marriage was nothing more than a pathetic farce for both of them. Rue and Lucy felt very awkward even around their own mother. The children were always incredibly happy when their mother could play with them, but the man understood that all this was extremely wrong. He knew, of course, that Estella was constantly busy, but he doubted that she had ever been interested in her own family, since she had no intention of making even the slightest effort. Because of the disagreements between them, all the joy simply evaporated, and in the end, it was Stella who gave in first. In fact, they made this decision a week before the girl changed dramatically. She called Isaac into her office and told him that she couldn't live like this any longer, so she had decided to move abroad. She explained that the children would stay with him, as would everything else. The girl also said that he didn't have to worry about money at all, because she had already prepared housing and everything she would need. When the man heard this, he was very surprised. He could not believe that she was serious. 
and Estella could not even look at him. She said that they should get a divorce. The man was then beside himself with rage. However, he managed to contain his emotions and only asked if she had simply found another man. She then sighed heavily but did not answer. Isaac, of course, did not condemn her because he knew that she was simply such a person and could not do otherwise. He didn't understand how she could first say that she didn't remember anything, and then that she had been transported to the future. He thought that she thought that she could correct her mistakes in this way. But of course he knew that it shouldn't affect him, because he could never believe that nonsense about her loving him. He thought that if she really wanted to correct all her mistakes, then she should have told him about it personally. But no, she considered their meeting a mistake from the very beginning. That's why he didn't hope for anything. He spent so many years just taking and waiting in vain. He spent them on a man who wasn't going to give anything in return. And that's why at this moment he can't let go of Stella, whose images constantly flash through his head because she caused him pain again and again. After marriage, the happiness lasted only one year. They were truly a couple in love, but it did not bring any results in the end. In fact, these were peaceful days, during which Estella did become pregnant. However, everything secret sooner or later becomes clear, so the happy times ended very quickly in their family. In that kingdom, Estella was his only island of safety, but even she hid things from her own husband, whom she said she loved. It was a secret that was like treason. In fact, his parents were executed on a false charge of treason and his sister was simply taken and sent out of the country. And Estella was behind all of this. First, she closed the investigation into his parents, despite the false accusations that were clearly shown. And then she sent his sister away, so that she would not interfere with Estella's evil plans. That sweet and lovely girl to whom Isaac proposed simply disappeared before his eyes. While the man was taking his children to the bedroom, Rue, who was sitting on his lap, suddenly touched his head and hit it very hard with his hands. Isaac reacted to this quite calmly. However, he smiled and said that it was quite painful, and also asked who told him that it was okay to hit Daddy's head like that, since he might get angry because it was very unpleasant. When Rue saw this, he immediately laughed, and hugging his father, he said that he was finally okay again. After that, the man asked if they were ready for bed yet, the children screamed happily, saying that they were ready. When he carried them into the bedroom, it was already deep night outside. The man helped them change their clothes, brushed their teeth, and put them to bed. Before leaving, he stroked Rue's head and told the boy, who was covered with a blanket, that he would like to play a little longer, because he really enjoyed spending time in the greenhouse, especially when his mother was there. But the man, smiling, said that they would do everything only after sleep, because the Fairy of Dreams asked to convey that she wanted to visit them already, so they needed to fall asleep quickly in order to see each other. Rue covered himself even more with the blanket, and then in a quiet voice closing his eyes, he said that it was very good to play with his mother, and he also said that he wanted it to be like that always. Isaac smiled and asked if they really enjoyed having fun with her that much. Then Lucy spoke up and said that of course they did, because she even liked their food, and she played it very realistically. Meanwhile, the children were already tired. After such conversations and a hard, difficult, long day, they finally began to fall asleep. When Isaac saw that they were completely asleep, he left the room and slowly, quietly closed the door so as not to wake them up under any circumstances. As soon as the man was about to leave for his room, he suddenly heard a very loud scream behind him. It was Estella, who in her anger could not control her emotions. She ran up to him and began to scream loudly, saying that she did not agree to this divorce at all and would not allow him to do it under any circumstances. The man quickly realized that at this rate, she would wake up the children. So he covered her mouth and told her to be quiet. Stella immediately whispered his forgiveness, saying that she hadn't thought about the fact that they were already asleep, but she still wanted to get her way. So, looking him straight in the eye, she asked if she could just fix her mistakes and then they could go no further. Isaac, who didn't like this whole situation at all, sighed heavily, covered his face with his hand, 
and said that he had already told her that she couldn't just change everything, especially after what she had done. Then he said that it wasn't really about her. He was already tired, so there was nothing he could do. Estella came closer to the man and asked if she really could do nothing to help in this situation. With hope in her voice, she said that she could make him so happy that he would completely forget about all his pain. This all made him even more angry. He said that it felt like he was talking to a wall. He also added that she was as impenetrable as she was at 19. In order for her to finally leave him alone, he said that he could assume that she had indeed gone to the future, but his decision would still remain the same. Estella asked him to give her one chance because she says she has been in love with him for five years, and according to him, she hurt him, although he does not remember anything at all. The girl said that all this did not change the fact that she, who was standing right in front of him, still loved him, and so she asked what she could do in such a situation. Of course, just try to hold on to her beloved. Estella began to approach him closer and asked him to give her just one chance, at least during the divorce process. Isaac turned around and said that it was all very interesting. Only last night she looked at him with eyes that were filled with contempt, and now she wanted to fix everything, as if nothing had happened. He thought for a while, and then suddenly smiled and said that he agreed to it. And as he passed by her, he whispered in her ear that he very much hoped that he could cause her the same pain that she had once caused him. After that, he walked away from her with quick steps, and Stella, despite the fact that she was very angry, thought that everything was not so bad because a start had been made. She just needs to correct the mistakes that were made by the future her, and then everything will work out. After all, she is the sweetest, most beloved and cherished princess in that world. She was the only heiress who always knew what to say, so Estella thought she had a happy ending in her pocket. She could practically smell it. And so, Two weeks passed from that moment, and the girl began to despair completely because she did not understand how a person could be so cold. She considered him simply a stubborn ram who could not make even a little concession. She even had the impression that she was talking to her favorite wall. Throughout all these weeks, Estella tried to give him various gifts to at least appease him a little. The nanny, who was very worried about the lady, and in general about their marriage, said that, unfortunately, she definitely couldn't buy someone's love, so she had to think of a slightly better way. Estella was then very surprised and asked what she should do in that case, because he looked as if he didn't want to communicate with her at all, so all she could do was show the sincerity of her intentions. She also told the nanny that she had never seen such evil people, and Isaac looked to her as if he was ready to even spit in her face. The maid immediately asked the mistress to watch her speech, because she was, as it were, 19 years old. She asked her to try to do everything possible to behave decently, even despite her amnesia. Estella knew she wouldn't be able to achieve anything this way, so she asked what she was like at her age. The nanny replied that she was calm, refined, neat, and collected. She would never even utter such uncultured words. What's more, she would never even think of such a thing. When Stella heard all this, she was very surprised. And with her mouth open, she wondered if she was really such a mature and conscious person. The nanny replied that she was not only a princess, but also the mother of your children. She would never sit on the sofa in such a manner, and even more so would not use such rude words, because she knew that it was simply unacceptable. When Stella heard all this, she said that she always behaved like that, but the nanny replied that as she grew older, she became an even more mature person and became a real lady. The girl said that this cold and strict Estella was not like her at all, so she would not like to be like that, but the maid replied that she and her thinking had changed a lot since her marriage. The girl still didn't understand why everything was happening this way, and continuing to sip her hot tea, she asked what could have influenced her so much that she decided to change only after marriage, and so radically. The nanny, who had worked for her almost all her life thoughtfully, said that she had simply grown up. She also admitted that she was actually very happy about it. Estella, pondering her words, was silent for a while, and then she said that it looked as if she had done a lot of bad things to Isaac 
and wondered if this was really connected with her changes. The nanny immediately began to feel uncomfortable and asked the girl not to ask her about her relationship with His Highness, since she should not interfere in other people's business. She explained that she only had the right to look after the mistress, but certainly not to give her advice on personal relationships or anything like that. Estella asked that in that case, she tell how the girl communicated with Isaac, so that she could eventually think about it and put an end to it all. For some time, the nanny doubted whether she should do it at all, but she told the lady that the girl had made quite a lot of mistakes in her married life, and she did many cruel things towards Isaac and even towards her children. Estella asked the girl to give at least one example, but she replied that it was very difficult to talk about it, because there were many mistakes, and she also did a lot of bad things. The girl said that even if this is true, she still needs to know in order to correct herself in the future and never make such mistakes again in her life. The nanny said in a trembling voice that the girl had locked herself in her room and had not come out for a very long time. She had sent away all the servants and had not even let Isaac out. After this, in a quieter voice, the woman said that of course no one saw this, but she brought different men to her place every day. And when the girl heard all this, now she understood how Isaac really felt. It now makes sense to her why he treats her so badly because she was just a terrible person. Estella was silent for a while, and then she said that she never thought that she would ever sink so low that she could treat people so cruelly. The nanny immediately approached the girl and said that instead of scolding herself like this, she should think about how to be serious and move on, and also how to improve her relationships with her loved ones. The girl immediately burst into tears, and turning to her assistant, she asked if she had really not been serious all this time, but thought completely differently. The nanny tried to calm her down, but still told the truth that the girl was focused on giving gifts, but the master's feelings were still very hidden from her, so she needed to express her sincerity in words or a letter. Estella continued to cry, but had calmed down a little and asked if he would really listen to her, since she had been completely unfaithful to him, although at first she had made him believe that she loved him. The woman looked at her with a sad look and said that only the past could know about this. Estella was overcome with emotion, and she suggested to the nurse that they should catch the boys and make them tell everything. The nurse asked in surprise if she really wanted to go to the gentleman with this right away, but the girl replied that for now it would be better to tell only her. Of course, there was no support on the woman's face, and in a cold voice she asked what if these men confirmed her betrayals. Smiling, she said that in that case she was the worst of the worst and there would be no forgiveness for her. In fact, a couple of weeks ago, it seemed to her that making peace with Isaac would be easy and that she would be able to deal with it quickly. However, now that she has learned of all her misdeeds and realized that what the nanny told her was indeed true, she simply deserves to die for doing such a thing to anyone at all. The girl was simply hysterical. She was panicking and couldn't collect her thoughts because she simply didn't know what to do next. Estella said that in the current situation there was no hope of reconciliation. She was simply a terrible person, and there could be no forgiveness for her. Continuing to cry, the girl said that if she really did all these terrible things, then the right thing to do would be to just let the man go so that he wouldn't suffer. But the nanny said a very correct and good thing. She asked the girl if it was true that he still had feelings for her, since he was still living with her. She said that the master had probably been waiting for her all this time, so she asked her not to blame herself too much. She just needed to make peace with him, and then everything would be fine. With a smile on her face, the nanny asked if she really thought that all married couples lived in peace and harmony. But that was not the case at all, because they also had their own problems misunderstandings, and, of course, quarrels. Estella had calmed down a little, but said that it was unlikely that any of the spouses had declared a divorce, behaving like a stubborn donkey, and saying that they could no longer live like that, and then suddenly changing their mind and declaring their love. When the woman heard these words again, she sighed heavily and asked that Her Highness behave with dignity and really try to filter her vocabulary.
But Estella replied that in their situation it was completely unimportant. It was she who initiated the divorce, Isaac. He was probably already tired of it. She also said that if a woman were in her place, she would also forget about dignity. She was silent for a while, then took her dear nanny by the hands and asked them to have a frank talk. She asked the nanny to imagine that she had an idiot husband who wanted a divorce. But just a few days later, he suddenly decided to change his mind. So she asked what the woman would do in that case. When the nanny heard this, she was simply furious. She said that in that case she would simply tear him to pieces so that he would never be with another woman again. Estella, hearing this of course, was not happy because she was precisely that idiot. When the nanny understood this comparison, she even felt a little ashamed because she had not thought about it. The girls were silent for a while, after which the elderly woman said that she heard Mr. Aryu crying. So, getting up from her seat, she replied that she would go to calm him down because she was his nanny. But Estella tried to stop her because there was no crying and she wanted to continue the conversation. The woman continued to insist on her own and, completely ignoring the girl's requests, began to leave. Before opening the door, she also said that she needed to meet the Shea family because they were very nice people and communication would be beneficial. Estella, hearing this, immediately realized that the woman was simply changing the subject but she replied that they were on the verge of divorce, but miraculously reconciled, so the girl would better talk to them. And then, perhaps, she would find a way out for herself. The princess, hearing this, was a little surprised, and immediately wondered whether Count C was as terrible as she was. The nanny was immediately happy that she could help her, and that she herself would no longer have to interfere in the situation. So she said that, of course, he was the worst of the worst, so maybe there was at least one piece of advice that would work. Estella, hearing this, was not very happy at once, because she did not understand how this should support her at all, so she did not answer. And the nanny, who was about to leave, stayed and asked if perhaps the girl should return and sleep in the same bed with his lordship. She explained that now the girl doesn't sit in her room working all day, so she doesn't think there's anything scary about it and she said that it's better to sleep together. Estella was immediately interested in this proposal, said that she would really try, and then asked if it wouldn't be better to first get closer to Isaac physically, and only then make moves. The woman smirked and said that it was unlikely that his lordship would lay a finger on her, because he had a very big grudge against her. She also thought that even just lying in the same bed would be incredibly difficult for him. Estella, hearing this, was very surprised and asked how she could even think of such a thing, and then said that it was simply that if you sleep in the same bed with someone, you will be forced to see that person, even if you do not want to. And in that case, the conversation should start naturally. But she still considered this idea very successful. So she asked the nanny to move her things to Isaac's bedroom that same day. The nanny asked in surprise if she really wouldn't even consult the gentleman about this. But Estella didn't think that was necessary because he would still be against it, and she understood this perfectly well. But she still decided to approach him and at least notify him that she was going to sleep with him now. And when Isaac listened to all this, he categorically said that he was against it. Estella was very surprised and immediately asked why he was so abrupt in his decisions. And the man said that it was her idea to leave their chamber, but it was up to him to decide whether to let her back in, so she had no choice in the matter. He said in a rough voice that she had left without saying a single word, and now he did not understand how she wanted to suddenly return, simply by confronting him with the fact. Estella, sighing heavily, said that no matter what she talked to him about, it was all useless. He didn't even want to just talk like a human being. Isaac had his own opinion on this matter, and he said that sleeping in the same bed is a completely different level, so he doesn't think it's right to do it so quickly.